Hey, Shalom, I'm Akim. Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all the praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. No isn't a gospel, brother. Lift up the standard of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Oh, man, real quick, man. Hey, the water to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always inspiring. Um, it gives us a topic to go into to push this word man and that's how you know that the lord is dealing with you when the spirit constantly feeds you information you know like the apostles always say you got to strike while the iron is hot so the water you how about shimmy how shy for inspiring us to see these things and understand these things because i was having a conversation with one of my buddies man and this nigga all i can say is that's why I'm going to read Matthews 13 and 16 when it says, But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. We're blessed, brothers, because the Lord has put a spirit on us to not fold to this man's system. The Lord has put a, a, a spirit on us to keep integrity, man, to keep our faith in these dark and trying times because we get ready to be tested on all levels, you know, but the man of the Lord is still standing fervent and strong. And that's a good sign that, you know, we will make it out of here through faith. Because when you talk to the people around you, man, they're folding left and right. I mean, they're literally folding. First thing, you know, with this whole, you know what, going on. Certain places have to the 20th. Certain places have to the 4th, which was yesterday. Some people have already made it mandatory. Like in New York, you got to be all twisted up and stuff like that. And when you talk to people, they have this gun co approach towards it at first but when it push comes to serve shove they're folding man they're like well you know i got kids and this and this and this and that i got i got i got I, you know i got i got to take care of my family i get it you know what i'm saying it's all good and dandy but regardless of that this system is gonna crash regardless you're just part of the experiment that they're gonna use to get you out of the picture. But this system was never meant to continue on, man. That's why I don't understand. And I, I get it, I understand, but I don't understand how people can can sell out for five minutes of pleasure, man. Over a damn job, like over a healthcare, over apartment. Like to show you that the, the lavish lifestyle of America and you people are not even getting the, the better end of the stick and you're still consumed by this mediocrity that you're dealing with you still consume of saving your life when you have nothing man you ain't got bunkers you ain't got trillions of dollars okay you don't have land you don't have businesses you don't have nothing but a damn job that you pay taxes to in an apartment you have to pay for somebody else's expenses and a vehicle that you're paying for to give to another person to keep them rich and you fighting tooth and nail to keep this stuff afloat, man. And that's why I would quote this, the, 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 uh, well, Morpheus, he quoted it. Morpheus said, these very people will fight tooth and nail to keep the system going, man, to stay in the matrix. That shows you Esau has done a number on the people's minds, man. And I'm talking about our people because Jake, they take pride in money. They take pride in vehicles. They take pride in jobs and social status. Oh, I got a job, you know, I got savings. I mean, I got a savings account. That's cool, but you know what I'm saying? This is, come on, man. If that's what it's all about, then that's why the Most High is not going to save the two thirds. That's why I can see a lot of our people getting ready to die, man. And Esau adding icing on the cake because you that go down there and shoot the three pointer, you out of here. You you just pretty much, you're going to be out of here within, within a month, two, three years, however long it takes. Depends up to the Most High. You out of here. So basically, you just sold your soul, worked your life away just to get found, just, just to say ha-ha jokes on you. And all you going to be mad, man, when you find out that the joke has been on you, okay? That the joke has been on you, you're going to find out that after you did everything they told you to do, you've been duped by this damn, by this system. You've done everything they told you to do just to find out that it's still not going to work out in your favor. To find out that you're still going to get that resignation letter. To find out that the economy is still going to crash. That you're still going to lose your places of employment in your homes, in your vehicles. You're still going to be homeless. <laughs> and all the money that you got. 
all the savings that you allegedly have, whether it be Federal Reserve notes, uh, uh, box uh, bonds and stocks, whatever you want to call it. Regardless of that, when they institute over into the Karagma, you're going to lose all that because when a collapse comes, you're going to lose all your money, man. You know, you're going to lose all your money because I think the, uh, what is it, the FDC, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're only liable to pay up to 10% of your losses. Like if you had a million dollars in stocks and bonds or in an account, the bank is only allowed to pay you 10%, which you will only get 100000 back. But even then, you may not even get that back because there ain't going to be any more greenbacks in circulation in due time. So that's why I said we're blessed, brothers. We're blessed to see this thing, man. Because we could, we look, we could have still been asleep like our families, like our friends, you know, like our loved ones and stuff. We could have still been in a slumbered state of mind, man. And you got to be careful, too, man, because people that was rocking with you that know about this truth. And y'all ain't really rocking each other. Pay attention to them, man. They probably out of the picture for a reason because the Lord don't want them there. But at the same time, they secretly selling out to the beast. So if your woman's left you or you leave your woman or a bro, whatever you want to call it. Hey, nine times out of ten, man, you leave a woman that you were dealing with that know about this truth. The Lord is going to give her over into this system. He's going to allow, allow her to be destroyed because you was the protection. You was the foundation through this wisdom and knowledge. But when they rebel against that, and then before you know it, they become more, well, I got to start my career. I got to take care of my kids. I got to get these licenses to make sure, you know, that I'm living. And they're going to fold because they don't have the spirit of the Lord to, to, to keep them afloat. Okay, so I just want to go into this precept real quick. This is the book of uh, Matthew 13. And uh, this is Matthew 13. And I'm going to start our verses. Nine, it says, who have ears to hear, let him hear. OK, now everybody don't have ears to hear. Now, everybody has two ears on their heads, but this is not talking about literally just hearing. This is talking about understanding and comprehending what's being said, being able to believe the times, being able to put your faith in a power that said that these things was going to happen before they was going to happen. OK, but our people don't have the ability to believe that because the Lord didn't open up their mind to this understanding. So it's like you're trying to you're trying to save them. It's, it's really pointless, man. But we still got to do our job and warn them and tell them, look, that's not the way to go. But, you know, I understand you may go left. You got that blood off your hands, man. So at the end of the day, it's just like up to the Lord if he's going to put the spirit on them to see it or not. But for majority of our people it's already too late. OK, and it says here, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said it to them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given, which shows you that the Lord didn't come and come to save everybody, because if he came to save everybody and bring salvation into the whole entire world, he wouldn't have been speaking in parables that his disciples was the ones that was able to discern that. OK, so when you speak it to your family, yeah, you telling them that the Israelites, America is going to be destroyed. Yeah, they understand as far as what you're saying. They could comprehend the, the, the verbiage coming out of your mouth, meaning, yeah, America is going to be destroyed. That's common sense. But the gravity to the extent of the aftermath and, and how to navigate through that is what's a blinder to them. Because in their mindset, well, that means you're going to die, too. But they don't see salvation because the Lord didn't open their mind to that. Like I was talking to my mother the other day. He was on the phone about an hour and a half, man. And uh, we was going back and forth. And um, she's swept down. Trump is a problem. I said, I said, how can you believe that Jim Crow Joe has your best interest? I said, he wants to kill you off for fucking the most high sake. Like, how can you people not see this? Well, she's like, well, I can see America being destroyed. But it's like our people, for whatever reason, they still want to hold on to hope in this man. This man has not done anything. That's because he can get on a news teleprompter and give you a, 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 a mediocre message that sounds totally fabricated. Like, how can anybody believe anything that these people say? But for him to, for, and you believe that. He gets on there and give you a feel-good speech. Oh, we're going to increase food stamps by a thousand percent. That sold you, Jakes, man. You're sold off that. Not, not seeing the end game. You're not seeing that that's going to be a detriment 
and to your very livelihood in the near future. Because you're getting stimulus checks every month. You're getting food stamps every month to take care of your kids. You really think that that's for your benefit? They're going to quickly implode this system and it's going to collapse, man. And all you people that got the goodie bag from Esau, you're going to have to go a little further than that. You're going to have to take that C. Rogma. And that's what he wants. I want to. I want, I want y'all to say that he's not the devil then. All right. And it says, "From whoever hath him to be given in, he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath." And then look at what happened. This guy wrapped the news, man. He didn't have it anyway, but the Lord took away the little he did have when he really he didn't have anything. He was just a scoffer. It says, "But therefore speak I to them in parables." So when we speaking to our friends and family. You know, even our women or whatever, kids, it's a parable unto them because in their mindset, well, the white man ain't saying what you're saying, so I can't accept it. Joel Osteen is not saying what you're saying. T.D. Jakes ain't saying what you're saying. They saying everything is going to be all right. So why would I listen to you, a person that has no credibility? Okay, you on the street speaking for the Lord's sake. Who are you? And that's how they look at you. They will never take credibility uh, or, or give us credit because we don't. A quote unquote look the part in their eyes. We we're not the part that we supposed to be in their eyes, so therefore they cannot see us. Okay, we'll show you how destroyed our people are. Jake has always listened to other nations and other men outside of their own prophets, man. Because they didn't want to hear what the prophets had to say. You know why? Because hey, we're not in a power seat. You know, no matter what we say is coming to pass, like my mom and shit, I'm using her as, a, as an example. She was so quick. To try to label us false prophets and saying that what we said ain't happening. But when I was on the phone with her, she was like, well, yeah, everything is happening. But she didn't she wasn't quick to give me credit on that. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't quick to give me credit on that. But she was quick to say, oh, well, I thought y'all said Trump was going to get reelected. Re he didn't. She was quick to throw that at me. You know what I'm saying? But she wasn't quick to say, oh, well, I see the charisma coming out. You were actually right. So you see how wicked our people are, how wicked they is. You see, it's all good, though. And it says here, because they seeing, it says, therefore, I speak to them in parables because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. They don't understand. And Jake not trying to understand, man. They don't want to. They don't want to. They want to hear that their life is going to continue on. They can go continue to work and pay their bills. Like, are you sure? A $26 hour job. Is that really worth it when you need twice as more than that to even have a comfortable living here $26 an hour won't even get you a house man you know what I'm saying if you don't play the cards right now you can make it manage but who just wants to manage who wants to just live paycheck to paycheck if you're gonna live you need to be living like the elites man then you may have an argument well I got too much at least when the rich man when the Lord told him to uh, sell everything it says he had great possessions. At least he had great possessions. He wasn't selling out for a nine to five at Whataburger, man, or working at some damn dental office or working for some city organization. He wasn't selling out through that. That ain't no, that's somebody that ain't got nothing. A uh, one, two bedroom apartment. No, it says he was a man of great possessions, man. He had land, livestock, palaces, man. This was a man that had money. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that's when it, that's why it says he walked away sorrowful. You know what I'm saying? You think if he 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 had a regular nine to five job and he saw the miracles of the Lord, he would have threw that shit in the trap. Man, the hell with this job. I'm going to follow you. Look at what the disciples did. Peter had a very lucrative field. He was a fisherman. Yahweh Shai had a lucrative career. He was a carpenter. There was money in that. But look at what Peter did. He like, yeah, man, sure, I'm, I'm following you, Lord, because it was set up through the Spirit. All right. But it says here, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, because Israelites do not understand. My mother don't understand. My friend don't understand. Okay. Uh, uh, my child's mother don't understand. None of these people understand. And shortly, but soon they will be took into the spirit world and not in the most probable manner. It says, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive for this people's heart is wax gross, wax gross. And their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and shall understand with their heart, and shall be converted, and I shall heal them. But the Lord don't want to heal them, man. 
because hey they not right anyway they wasn't chosen so you know brother it ain't really meant to get it's offensive because we're really just trying to save our people you know we're trying to give them hope and it's like a slap in the face but overall you got to say man i feel bad for these jakes man because we the ones that's blessed we can see it you know what i'm saying the lord has put a a uh, nonchalant spirit on us to not give a damn about anything i don't give a damn about anybody that i work with and quite frankly i don't, I wouldn't bat an eye if i didn't see any of them again and i barely know these people but that's the spirit the lord put on me to see the folly man and that's a good thing you know i ain't gonna miss them oh man i ain't gonna never see man hell no nah, man good riddance bro bye good riddance to all y'all man okay because y'all getting ready to go to the spirit row anyway and it says here, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. So we're blessed, bros. We're blessed, man. All right. And we got to continue to, to keep this word because as time progresses, we're going to be more blessed and more on an up and up. We're going to be more in, 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 in an upbeat type spirit while these people are looking dumb after they all lubed up and destroyed and dead and zombified over a damn job realize that they ain't gonna have anything anyway and it says for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them so we're in them times now that the men of the lord of old was longing to see the the, the uh, uh uh the end game okay prophets ask all the time when is the end game are you going to come and restore the kingdom into israel today you know, because when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, the believers was hyped. They're like, yeah, you know, we are Romans, man. They ain't going to be messing with us. We got Yahweh Shai here, man. He's coming to save us and, and put us back in rulership. They thought that 2,000 years ago, and it didn't happen. Okay, because they had to understand the Lord had to fulfill being crucified to come back another time to receive us. And we're in that time now that he's getting ready to receive us to himself. And we can see that. But if you talk to an average Jake, Negro, Latino, Native American... And they'll laugh you to scorn, man. And they're like, oh, well, Jesus coming. They don't even believe. And they'll call him Jesus. They're like, oh, they don't even believe in him coming back. Like my mother, she tried to use that. But that could be 50 more years. I, I, I immediately stopped. I said, you can't say that no more. I said, you can't say that. I said, no. I said, you can't be saying that because you want to continue to live an unprofitable lifestyle. I said, you people cannot keep saying that. Y'all said that 2,000 years ago. Well, it can be another 1,000 years. 2,000 years ago, 100 years ago, y'all said that. You people don't understand that prophecy is fulfilled over a course of time. Now, it could be 50 years from now, but we highly doubt it, okay? We're not speaking that negativity, okay? I'm not saying 50 years. We're saying soon. It could be this year. It could be next year. It could be this month. Who knows, okay? Lord's will is a lot sooner. But the reality of it is that's just an excuse so Jake could continue living an unprofitable lifestyle. That's all that's about. That's why I had to cut off. I had to stop. Nah, you can't say that. You can't do that. Nah, we're not doing, we're not playing them games no more. Okay, we got the karagma that may be very well instituted this year. You mean to tell me that we got to wait another 50 years of suffering and torment in this place under this man just so the Lord can come get us? No, no, thank you. You can wait 50 years, but hey, the Lord, he's going to come get us. All right. Uh, uh, Matthews 10, and I'm going to start at verses uh let's start 38 it says and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me and you jakes you don't want to take after your cross man you you always want to be comfortable okay even the hell you've catching on the esau eat them you still don't find a problem with that you're not even mad at esau you mad at us when the man that put you in this predicament is oppressing you you mad at us we ain't oppressing you man we're trying to give you life and it says he is not worthy of me and he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it, man. All right. So that's the whole point. He that received you received me. And he that received me received him that sent me. Okay. And that's the thing. If you don't receive us, then you ain't receiving your house shy. I don't care how uh, cookie you want to cut it. If you don't receive the men of the Lord, the prophets, because we're ushering in the uh ushering of Yahweh Shai, man. We're laying a foundation so the Lord can come back and redeem us. If you don't go through his men, then you're not getting to him. Just like if you don't go through him, you ain't getting to the most high. Period. And he that received the prophet in the name of a prophet should receive a prophet's reward. 
And he that received the righteous man in the name of a righteous man should receive a righteous man reward. Okay? So, hey, man. Brothers, we are blessed. That's all I can say. And with that, all praises and glory and honor that is due to you. How about you, me? How about you? And with that, shalom and a ball, ball.